four, three, two, one, zero. What do you do if you want to survive a nuclear war? Well, a lot of things. But one of those things is having the right equipment stored. We're going to look at 11 items that the Office of Civil Defense told Americans to stock during the height of the Cold War. These were items that they needed to store in their home in the event that they were going to shelter in place and some items that they should take with them if they needed to head to a public fallout shelter. You have often seen this sign on buildings. It means that indoors is a public fallout shelter. We'll see what they advised in 1968 and compare that to some of the items that are available today. Our guide for this is the 1968 In Time of Emergency that was published by the Office of Civil Defense within the Department of Defense. This is an original that I bought on eBay, but you can buy reprints on this. In fact, I've published some of these reprints through my other website, prepperpress.com. Doesn't get more official than this. So this video will be in part a historical lesson of sorts from what Americans were told to stock by the Office of Civil Defense within the Department of Defense, but also a bit of an informative session to discuss some of the items that are available today. Because while the physics of the atomic bomb have not changed, the advancement in technology and the wide availability of modern products has changed. Now it's important to understand at least a little bit what this time period was like if you're young enough that this is sort of a foreign concept. In the 1960s, it was particularly front and present. This is the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis, after all. And the Office of Civil Defense was tasked with a big, massive task of preparing the American public to survive nuclear war and nuclear fallout. As the mushroom cloud forms, these particles are made radioactive. For as they cool and condense, they are contaminated by residue from the bomb. These particles, when they fall back to Earth, are what we call radioactive fallout. Part of that task involved identifying and stocking public fallout shelters, but also to spread information on what Americans could do to shelter in place at home. Millions of our people would be killed by the initial blast and heat. Millions more would be threatened by death from radioactive fallout. But that is a threat that can be combated. The premise was that you needed to be prepared in order to stay in a shelter for a minimum of two weeks. We suggest you store a 14-day supply of food. Odds were high that you wouldn't need to stay that long in a shelter. However, an exchange of missiles could go on for a while. Of course, during this two-week period, Americans would need critical supplies in order to weather the storm. So let's start with what Americans were told to take with them if they needed to evacuate to a public fallout shelter. Public fallout shelters were designated with a maximum capacity. What would happen if that maximum capacity was hit and people were banging on the doors to get in? I don't know. Regardless, the public follow shelter should have had enough supplies stocked to sustain the maximum capacity of people for two weeks. Those public follow shelters were stocked with food, water, sanitation equipment, medical kits, and radiological instruments. However, there were items that people were still advised to bring to the public follow shelter. Special foods or medical supplies that were unique to your situation were at the top of that list. If you had an infant, for example, you needed to bring infant formula. If you were diabetic, you needed to bring insulin. You get the idea. They were also told to bring a blanket for each person of the family. A battery-powered radio or flashlight was also advised. And extra batteries. So at that time, the government was stocking these fallout shelters with large drums of water and sealed canned food. So here's an example. These are Civil Defense Era survival crackers. Still sealed, a total of 62 crackers per pound. Minimum number of crackers per can, 419. Actually, I'm gonna open this can of crackers and taste test these in the video that follows this one. So actually, if you're watching this, you can also see me open up this can of crackers and we'll see if they're still good. And then we'll wash it down with some Cold War era US Aqua. By the way, they plan for six crackers per person per day. More on that in the next video. But what about millions who live in suburbs or rural areas, often far beyond quick walking distance of the nearest public shelter? So now let's talk about what Americans were told to stock at home to shelter in place during a nuclear war. Now during this time, the Office of Civil Defense was also publishing a lot of content on how to build your own fallout shelter at home. 
With foresight, you can have a home shelter for the protection of your family, built from specifications and cost estimates for various types of shelters provided by your local civil defense office. Now these are 11 items that they described as essential or desired to stock in your fallout shelter. They could also be stocked just in your basement or in your home, near where you would go in the event of a nuclear war. Number one, water. Fill all available bottles with water. Water is even more important than food. In the prepping circles, we advise one gallon of water per person per day. In a survival situation in a fallout shelter, the Office of Civil Defense advised one quart of water per person per day. Presumably, probably the logistics of stocking one gallon per person per day in a public fallout shelter was daunting, let alone the fact that they just had a daunting task of supplying fallout shelters in the first place. Regardless, one quart of water per person per day should be sufficient for drinking purposes only. If you needed to use water for cleaning or sanitation, then it became more problematic. Now, as I mentioned, the federal government was stocking drums of water. And in the 1960s, we didn't have the same options of water storage that we have available to preppers today. Today, we have a large assortment of different types of water containers that can be used. Stocking enough for two weeks should not be a massive hurdle for anyone, unless maybe you've just got a tiny New York City apartment, in which case you're going to have to rely on a public fallout shelter that's no longer stocked, i.e. your dad. Of course, just as there are plenty of companies catering to preppers today, there are companies catering to people who are trying to prepare for nuclear war. Hence, U.S. Aqua. Canned drinking water. Pure drinking water. Net weight, 12 fluid ounces. This can contains water pumped from our own well and immediately processed under scientific methods, resulting in a highly potable pure drinking water. Under ordinary storage, this will keep for years. Impervious to nuclear fallout. We'll let salt represent fallout dust. The particles don't go through the tin. The radiation does, but radiation is harmless to all except living material. It has no effect on the food inside. Now, if you wipe away the fallout particles, or better still, wash them away, the food inside cannot be contaminated and is perfectly safe to eat. We'll open this in the next video. Today, Nothing has changed, except maybe the can itself. P ultra purified emergency water, 50 year shelf life. Remember, there are many reserves in your home water system. The water heater, pipes or tanks contain safe water. The ice cubes in the freezer can be easily melted. If you are given advanced warning, fill all available jars and bottles. Sinks and bathtubs will hold large amounts of water. Now, in a worst case scenario, the nuclear war extended on and on and on, and you needed to leave your shelter to get some water, then ideally you would have the means to purify that water. Number two, food. As I mentioned, in a public fallout shelter, you're going to be limited to things like dry crackers. Boring, but it'll get you through. In a home fallout shelter, you get a lot more options. The home shelter should be stocked with supplies of food and water sufficient for two weeks. The easiest, most practical logical way to store food where you would be in a fallout shelter is to place your food pantry there. Then you would have dried food, canned food, everything where you needed to be already in place. Short of that, there are plenty of survival foods available to people today. The most obvious is probably the MRE, the XMRE, things like this. Now the advantage to foods like this are that one, it's a waterproof container, two, it has a really long shelf life, and three, you don't need a separate stove to heat the foods that are in here. Either it doesn't require heating or the heating elements are inside. Eating this for 14 days would be rough on your system though. They're called MREs for a reason. Meals require enema. You also have dehydrated and freeze dried foods like this. Each packet is its own meal. You just need to be able to heat water to pour it in the packet and give it some time. Note that I said you need more water. Eventually all that food and water that goes in needs to come out. And if you're in a room in a basement crammed in with your family and someone needs to poo, what are you going to do? Number three, sanitation supplies. Leaving the shelter is going to expose you to, potentially, radioactive fallout particles. This is what you want to avoid. It's why you're in the shelter in the first place. Now the best option for this is to poop in a bucket and pee in a container. And adequate provision made for emergency sanitation if no indoor facilities are available. But you need to have these containers in place already. You don't want to be in the shed fumbling for a few buckets when fallout particles are raining down. So we have products like the Luggable Lou. 
designed for things like this. Now this can be either used in an off-grid property where you're just getting started and don't have plumbing or chemical toilets of any type, but these are also perfect for sheltering in place bunkers, fallout shelters, you get the idea. It's a standard five gallon bucket with a built-in toilet seat. It has a handle spot on the bottom so you can dump it. Now the lid is also detached so you could use this on other buckets. What I like about this is that you can just store a bunch of plastic bags in here and some sawdust and some toilet paper and have what you need to go poo. So for example, to use this, you would line the inside with a plastic bag, do your business, sprinkle some sawdust or compost or what have you on top, and close the lid. Now here's a helpful hint. If you wanna control the smell, I'd advise you to keep number two and number one in separate containers. Each will smell bad, but they'll smell even worse when mixed together. Now if you're sheltering in place for an extended period of time and the bag is full or the stench is too bad, just tie it up, open your fallout shelter door and wing it outside. Now in some publications, the Office of Civil Defense advised going outside and digging a two foot hole, putting the trash bag in there and then covering it back up to prevent vermin from getting into it and spreading disease. Personally, I would just throw out the trash bag and plan to bury it when the threat of fallout is over. Number four, medicine and first aid supplies. Keep a first aid kit and learn how to stop bleeding. Now, first aid supplies should include all the basics that you would expect to find, bandages, aspirin, that sort of thing, and also any unique emergency supplies that you might need. For example, EpiPens. Antibiotics might also be needed and there are a variety of companies now offering what we can sort of call prescription free antibiotics. They're not technically prescription free because there's you can get these online, you just complete a questionnaire. I've got a whole other YouTube video on getting prescription drugs without a prescription, without a prescription. So check that out if you're interested. Number five, infant supplies. Get into the best available shelter as soon as possible. I don't have a little baby to hold up here as a prop. Those days are long over for me. But if you are expecting or you have an infant, a baby, then you need to plan accordingly. Infant supplies such as canned milk or baby formula, disposable diapers, blankets, clothes, you get the idea. You might want to stock more baby clothes and baby blankets and that sort of thing than you would typically use in a two week period because your ability to wash everything is going to be limited. Number six, cooking and eating utensils. You want forks, you want spoons, and to the extent you need to cook food, you need an ability to do that. I would try to avoid cooking in a small fallout shelter just because you need to account for ventilation, but it's an option. Now there are a lot of options available to you if you needed to cook inside in a small space. Compact collapsible hiking stove, white gas fuel, these are all things I've used for years. But just be mindful of the foods that you're stocking and whether or not you're going to need to heat that food or boil water. Now in this book, they even floated the idea of having an electric hot plate. Not great advice as the power is likely to be out. Plan for grid down. Number seven is clothing. Now if you're just sitting around the bunker, odds are high you're not gonna need to change your clothes every day. You might wanna change your underwear though. And if somebody had to leave the fallout shelter in an emergency and then come back, you'd want a change of clothes. Leave your badly contaminated clothing outside until radiation decays. Radioactive fallout dust could collect on the clothes and that's not something you wanna bring inside the fallout shelter. So you could have fine threads such as this or just basic cotton wear. But generally cotton is not advised. Synthetics are better. Number eight is bedding. My favorite blanket is this low cost wool blanket that you've probably seen available in Army Navy stores. This is low cost. It's dense, it's wool, so it'll keep you warm even if it's damp. It's thin yet warm, compact, and it's just a great overall blanket. You can stock a lot of these in a small amount of space. Now you're likely gonna want something more than just a simple blanket. You wanna be able to sleep in comfort because in the bunker, you're gonna be stressed out, wondering what the world is gonna look like when you get up. It may be necessary to spend several days in such a refuge, so it should be made as comfortable as possible. Having a sleeping pad or an inflatable mattress, that can only help. You'll also probably want a pillow. Number nine is firefighting equipment. If you're near the blast site, one of the big dangers is going to be fires. Damage by fire and blast may render some buildings unfit for protection from fallout. 
Now you need to think about this in terms of staying within a shelter. There are plenty of products available for combating home fires. General purpose, kitchen style, but in a shelter, these aren't things that you're gonna wanna blast around. Trust me, if you empty this thing inside a shelter, everyone is going to want to leave the shelter. A better source would be water or sand. Number 10 is general equipment and tools. Now you're not gonna be able to store your entire garage worth of tools inside a fallout shelter, but you can cover the basics. I'd start with a decent multi-tool. You can go from there and include an ax, a crowbar, other firefighting type tools, and things that you might need to escape. One very important piece of equipment is going to be this, a battery powered or crank powered radio. It will be difficult to know what is happening outside, but in the damaged area, those who have battery operated wireless sets could be reached by general situation reports here around your house may be dangerously radioactive from fallout now obviously in the 1960s people were not running around with smartphones but after a nuclear war radio is going to be your friend you'll want to know when you can escape the shelter now to that end, as I mentioned, public fallout shelters had the tools to measure radioactivity outside the shelter. If the radio's down and you don't have tools like that, how are you gonna know it's safe to go outside? Fortunately, there are now products available to people like you and me to measure radioactive fallout levels. Handheld Geiger counters, for example. Portable dosimeters. These aren't the most inexpensive products, but they work. If you needed to know the danger levels outside, this is the tool to measure that. Another, hopefully obvious tool would be flashlights. Have a good flashlight on hand. Electric lights may go out. And extra batteries. Last but not least, number 11 would be the all-encompassing miscellaneous items. Now miscellaneous items can include practical items such as candles, matches, lighters, civil defense instructions, and some personal items. Kids might want a stuffed animal. You might want a book to read. You might want pen and paper. You might want board games to play. You might want toothbrushes, a sewing kit, and some toiletries. This book even recommended cosmetics for the ladies. Because if you're stuck in a fallout shelter in the dark for two weeks and the world is coming to an end, obviously you need some eyeliner. Stock these items and you can be one of the few people roaming the scorched earth alive. I'll see you at the rally point.